guys. Today we're looking at an Ihaji patent duplex camera. This cost me $80 on in an antique store and it's worth about $250 on eBay. This particular one is in excellent condition. One of the neatest things about it was when I bought it, I spied it in a, in a reasonable price and when I was ready to pay for it, the guy brought out a Ziploc bag full with all of the accessories that you'd want for it. It's a beautiful six by nine centimeter, two and a half by three and a half folding plate camera. It's basically a miniature view camera. These were made from 1927 to 1939. It's a small portable camera that could be thought of as a small version of the famous Crown Graphics camera. The, on the top of the camera, we have this little leather handle and this secret button underneath the leather and you push this to release the front and pull it down and open it. Also back here is a lever to release the back and we'll show you how all of that works. But first we'll press underneath the leather, the button to open the front. It pops down like that. These two little knobs, your finger knobs, you squeeze in and it comes forward and it'll lock in the infinity position there. On the front of the camera, this knob is to raise and lower the lens. Here's the viewing screen window which can fold out. So this will raise and lower the lens and there's a little white dot here that you align with another little white dot to get the lens back in the center because you could crank it up or down quite a ways as such. I'll align the dots again. Over here on this side is another knob to transverse the lens left and right. And there's a little white dot on the black enamel and there's a black dot on the chrome to align that when you're done. And that's for taking landscapes of buildings where you want to do the different parallax corrections so that, so that things look parallel, like a typical view, find, uh, view camera. On the top, this is the viewfinder, and here's a little spirit level. So when you mount it, you can make sure that the camera is level by looking at that cute little level. And again, if, if, when you, if you fold this back into the camera, when it hits the back, this folds forward so that everything squeezes all the way to the back. Kind of neat. So this knob on the lower left here um, is the focus knob. And so once you're out here and it locked into infinity, then you can crank it forward and backward with this knob. Now it's locked right now, so you have to pull it out and then you can rack the focus forward. Now the focus scale goes from infinity up to about three feet and it's marked over here on this white plastic, might even be ivory, but this white plastic, it's marked in both feet and meters. And that's how you would focus by distance. You can also focus on the ground glass on the back, which we'll show you in a minute. On the front, we have a good view of the lens. When you ordered this camera, it could come with several different lenses. This is actually the better of the lens choices. This one's a Carl Zeiss. 105 millimeter f4.5. 105 millimeter sounds like a lot, but on this format camera, that's pretty much a normal size. Up here is the flash sync port. Next to that is a little button to enable you to get this setting to T or B. Right now it's in the T position. And to do that, it's kind of interesting because this, is, this little lever cocks the shutter. This little lever trips the shutter. Now, if you had cocked the shutter, and it won't let you cock it when you're in the T position, but if you were in one of these normal positions, like a 50th of a second, and had the shutter cocked, even though you press this button, it wouldn't allow you to get to the T or B until the shutter has been released. So the shutter's been released right now, and we're in the T position, and we're at F4.5. I'll 
move this back. I don't know if the camera will be able to see the. I don't know if the camera will be able to see the apertures, but as I run this forward, well, first I have to open the shutter with the. Again, the T. If you press the shutter release button, it opens the shutter. If I press it again, it'll close it. So if I run this. I don't know if you can see it up there on the in the the camera, but there's F22. And again, if I press this button, it'll release it back. So again, in the T position, that opens the shutter, that closes the shutter. I'll push this back. F4.5 and by the way this this moves real easy when you're in normal positions up here instead of T and B so now we'll turn it to B for bulb and now when you press this lever it opens and closes the shutter as you move the lever now I'll move it over to one second and we can cock the shutter and there's your one second exposure Here's a half a second. A fifth of a second. A tenth of a second. Twenty fifth. Fiftieth. One hundredth of a second, one two hundred fiftieth of a second. So the shutter works good. It's a little hard to cock sometimes. I can't really figure out why. Let me get this out of here. And again, you can use the remote release. Works great. Some lenses, not this one, have a removable front element. And when you remove that front element, then you can focus much closer on just the back lens, which is kind of strange. This particular Zeiss Icon, I'm sorry, Carl Zeiss lens is not removable as far as I know. The camera back gets pretty interesting. Here's the frame viewfinder. There's one on the side here and the one in the front, so you can look through that peephole to frame your object instead of down through there, if you'd rather. And on the back, this little lever here releases the back so you can take it off. But this particular back that's on here is the ground glass focusing back. It has a little lever here, a little button to release that. And then this canvas or cloth covering is your focusing hood so you can see in the dark and um, I focused this on my computer screen where I had some text and I'll take a picture of that and show it to you. So here I have the Ihaji mounted on a tripod looking at my computer screen. I racked the focus back and forth and got what I believe to be the best focus of some text on the screen. As you can see, looking through the back, um, the text is actually upside down. Here I used Photoshop to flip it so it's right side up. But if you could look close at this, which you probably can't through the video, you can see that because of the angle, slight angle that I shot it at, you can see the depth of field is so shallow that some of the text is not quite as clear as the rest as it leans out. That's because with medium format cameras, and this was shot at f4.5, you have an incredibly short depth of field. So it folds up nicely like that. And if, after you've focused, then you remove the focusing screen by pushing the lever and then everything just slides up like that. So that's the ground glass. I'll open it so here you you can see it 
see through it. And I'll, I don't know if you can see through that, but clever little design. So the first accessory you need, once you've refocused, is you need something to hold film. So this came with a leather case with three film holders in it. And they're numbered. There's number three, number one, and uh, number two still had the paper wrapper on it, which I kind of, kind of like. So if we take any one of these, number one in this case, you would just, there would be film in here which you would have loaded at home. This is the dark slide. So underneath there, you would have had put your piece of film. It's uh, got a little pressure, a little spring loaded to it. So you would put this in your camera. Have your, you've done your focusing, you have your shutter speed and f-stop shut. Then you would re lock this so it can't come up. Then you'd remove the dark slide, take your picture, put the dark slide back in again. <laughs> then remove the back. and put your second picture in. Remove the dark slide, take a picture, put the dark slide back in, remove the back, and go on and on and taking pictures like that using these single film holders, which are all branded Ihaji, and almost everything they have, if you look close, is labeled made in Germany. A better perhaps alternative for most of us might be this roll film holder. This one is a 120 roll film holder. It has this spring loaded release here to load the film. A take up spool and a serving spool. One of these would be actually part of your film. And when you're done, you, you'd have to take the spools out and reload them. You can also lift this whole unit up. So you could have in your dark room multiple rolls like this that you could flip out and rechange quickly. This just snaps together like that. Again, this has a dark slide as well. So you'd slide this through these two little grooves and you can lock it in and then you could take pictures again assuming you have focus now of course you could focus by the distance scale and then just crank your film up and keep taking pictures that way open this and a third way to take pictures on this camera is with film bags Kodak sold these very interesting film packs. This is the film pack holder. And again, it has a dark slide. And it has this little release on the top. It's spring loaded. And inside is a Kodak film pack. These snap in. They're kind of hard to get in because of the clearance of the tin. You notice this one is a Kodak Super X panchromatic film. So in this case, now I have to say this is an empty film pack. If it was a full film pack, there's a fuzzy slot here. There would be 12 pieces of paper sticking out the top and it labeled 1 through 12. So you would just snap this in 
you could lock it. Remove the dark slide. Now you'd have these 12 pieces of paper in their tab so you can just take a picture. You rip one out, take another picture, rip one out. And as you rip them out, inside magically Kodak keeps layering them up. And then when you're all done, and you can quit any time you want mid-roll, doesn't matter. You could take three pictures and save it. Put the dark slide back in and remove it. These holders look like this. These film packs from Kodak. Here's one load Veracrome. This one still has the cover on it. This is an empty one. They wouldn't normally be empty like this, but it is. This one's missing the spring in it. So is this one. This one still has the spring loaded back. This one has the spring loaded back, but it's missing the top cover. Same with this one. So what happens when you get these home after you've taken your 12 pictures, then you take this cover off where it's labeled here. There's an edge and you have to rip this off and then you can get at the film packs and you take them out and you peel them apart and then half goes in, black half goes in the garbage and the other ones go in your developing tank and you develop the prints. It's a pretty cool system. I'd never heard of it before and I had to Google it to find out about them and how they work. I'll leave a link to a website that gives a great video on how these film packs worked and how you used them and loaded them and everything. This YouTube link will also be in the description below the video. Let me put the ground glass focusing screen back on because that's the way I'm going to permanently store this thing. So this just slides back in here and we'll lock it in place. Again, the ground glass focus screen has a little tab here to open the door. Clever piece of engineering. On the bottom of the camera we have a quarter by 20 tripod socket. We also have one on this side of the camera. And I have to warn you, these tripod sockets are the shallowest tripod sockets I've ever seen. So the normal threaded insert that I have on my release plates for my Manfrotto quick release plates is too, the threads are too long for this and it'll jam up before it gets tight. So I had to put a washer on there so that it didn't get too tight. And on this side is our little viewfinder door. So now that we think we're all done taking pictures and we want to fold this up, We would do something like this. A reasonable person would take this threaded. Well, I'll even do that. And take this. I don't know if I can with my fingers. Yeah, we'll take this release off. You would fold this up like that. It can snap over the shutter release button. Get the focus all the way back. Push these two knobs in and it'll slide the lens back. Push it back nice and tight. Then these two release knobs here will fold it up. And you have a really neat medium format camera. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the video.